Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I getting messages of things. I'll stop looking. Um. Yeah. I mean. First. First show. It's gonna. It's gonna go down. Yeah. It's gonna be something <laughs> we're gonna look back to and basic and hopefully laugh about it. Yeah. We probably will. Yeah. So I I do have a starting bit kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sort yeah. of relating to what we were talking about when it comes to swearing. No idea how we will actually splice this together. But if it were to be a cold open, I would just go, shit, fuck, cunt, tits, cocksucking motherfucker tits. No, <laughs> wait, hold on. I, that's wrong. Uh, shit, fuck, cunt, cocksucking motherfucker tits. That's the seven words that you can't say on television. Okay, so we are all set now. So we are not in television, so that that's good. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, an, it's an old bit from George Carlin. And the great mm -hmm. thing about it is that before he made that list, there was no list officially of what you can't say on television. Uh, so the uh, TV guys basically saw his bit being aired on television and was like, Oh, re wait, that's a really good idea. Let's take that list and say, you can't say these things. <laughs> Depends on what television, to be honest, because it would be... Well, this is America. Yeah. America. Yeah, you can't America. fart sideways even to get sued, so... <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I mean, and I guess that sort of sets a tone for the podcast as well. Sort yeah. of humor-wise <laughs> and <laughs> swearing. <laughs> that On that kind of level, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, listener will be aware of what's coming. So. Yes, I mean, uh, I'm also reminded of uh, the, the thing that Andy Berkey used to say, like, you're listening of your own free will. Absolutely. <laughs> Which, maybe we should ask him if you can get that stinger and put it in, uh, like, at the intro as breaks in between. If you need to have some hard cuts, you can just, like, you're listening of your own free will. <laughs> now back to regular scheduled programming. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That should be our catchphrase if if he allows us to to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Or we can just take it and hand him, hand him a free T-shirt, and he'll be like, "Yay, T-shirts." <laughs> <laughs> or that way, yeah. Yeah. But okay. So, what's you been up to this last week or something? Red, you're. I, I heard you're not full of shit. No, I'm not. If, um, if you want to I'm... talk about it, that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. now it's too late. Uh, no, we, I've, I've. We have the power I've... of editing. Come on. No, yeah, sure. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm. Um, I've learned a lot about myself uh, for, the, for this past week because I, I, I decided to take um, August off from work, which was a very good decision and one of the perks of being self-employed. And I decided to spend time with the kid uh, first of all, um, then take time to myself to just rest and work on ideas and project and design instead of working full time. Also fixing my car, fixing my parents' car and fixing myself. So basically I had a full uh, checkup of my potato body. And so inside, outside with his camera everywhere <laughs> just to see if everything is fine. And everything is fine, so that's Sounds good. Like but fun. yeah, it was it was it, it was interesting. Uh, to be honest, it was it was not that great of a fun, but it, it went well. No pain um, of any kind. Uh, just uh, interesting to be in an hospital and 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 have enough people uh, look outside and inside of you. Uh, mm. So that's weird. Um, so in the end, uh, pretty much everything is okay. I will have to get surgery for my ankle in a few months, week, when I decide to do it, uh, because it's going to um, take probably two months to heal. Oh. So I won't be able to um, run, which is a given, uh, but also drive and, and do a few things. So I oh, would have to be... Careful for yeah two months, and full recovery is expected to take at least six months with physiotherapy and exercise and stuff like that. So yeah, I have to be uh, careful with my schedule to be able to 
put it at the right moment to be able to take care of the kid, wife, and stuff that I have to do, and not to be uh, stuck at home and, and unable to move. Um, so that that's the downside of it, but everything is, else is pretty much okay. That was the 45-year-old uh, anniversary checkup. So yeah. that is done. I'm happy it's done, <laughs> to be honest. But the, the, uh, the ankle, is that you twisted your ankle early this year? And no, I it's an twist, old injury. Uh, it's a very old injury. I twisted my right. ankle several times over the past 15 years, um, mm. mainly doing martial arts. Um, and it was a few times it was really bad, like not able, not being able to walk for a few days. But I had to go to work, so I had to walk, and so no proper healing and stuff. So mm. I had <clears throat> an arthro CT scan. I believe that's how it's called. So they inject your product into the ankle and to take a scan, a CT scan of your ankle to see what, yeah. what's in it and how it, it, it's broken or not. And turns out I have uh, two ligaments that are broken. They would have to open my feet and to reattach them and to reinforce them with other uh, ligaments, like probably fake ones. I'm not sure because we didn't discuss it in details uh right now we will discuss it just before surgery mm. um so yeah i will have to go through this uh which is okay because it's just the uncle i will sleep for one morning they will cut me open do what they have to do stitch me up and i will be on my way and and at home for two months are, are they gonna use oh, sorry are they gonna use the screws on your foot or this or what ankle? Are they going to use screws? I don't think they, they, they will use screws. I think they will just reattach the ligaments and put... I have, I have no idea, to be honest. Uh, maybe, yeah. Which would I mean, be... that, would, that would be the best part I of it talk. because you get to keep them. And I mean, this I... is we're, ta we're talking about medical grade steel. I mean, just imagine Ooh. about the possibilities. That would give a nice knife. <laughs> and if I can, if I can beep in the airports, that would make me so happy because <laughs> I, I always beep in the airports for absolutely no reasons. Mm. So that would give me a proper reason to beep in the airports, and and and, and I would be happy to do so. Yeah. So yeah, I've done that this week, a uh, full checkup of pretty much everything. Um, and today, I did something that was a first for me. I did some zip lining. Is it called? Ooh, oh, when yeah. You go up in the trees and and do scary stuff uh, and pretend. Fun. To the word not, you should be using not, is not fun. Discuss. Yeah, fun. Absolutely, that's it. <laughs> so that was the first time I had fun in the trees <laughs> since I was a kid. Um, I have to say I'm super scared of heights. Um, I mean, I was before going there. So mm. the, the the old point was to not be scared anymore because I was like, mm, I don't like to be scared of heights. So I have to find something. And it was sunny. It was beautiful. The kid was bored. So we decided to go. It's not too far from the house. Uh, it's like a 25 minutes drive um, to the mountains. Ooh, and yeah. up there, we started with a basic uh, training uh, almost just above the floor, one meter or two meters above the floor, just for security check and, and learn everything that you have to learn. And then you are on your own and you go in the trees and your seven years, co seven years old kid jumps from branch to branch and to <laughs> eat trees to trees and he's not afraid. So you have to be the uh, brave dad that follows without shaking. What, what can uh, I not shit your pants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that was fine and it went went all okay it was not that high and i decided i was i was scared at the beginning because again i have vertigo and and i'm mm. very scared of height since i'm 25. i believe that's something to do with my inner ears because it was damaged at some point um but it went fine so at the end of the afternoon i decided to scale up the uh, difficulty of the thingy uh, so it basically starts with a pink color uh, parkour then you have the orange yellow green blue uh purple red and black so black is not for me i went to the blue one it was mm. the 
most difficult one that I did today. It was, I was at some point eight meters in the air, which is super high for me, but I did it. I'm happy. Yeah. I didn't give up. No, no. Uh, eight meters is ho tall for every, anyone. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I hear you. It was tall for me, but uh, yeah, I was, I was happy to um, overcome my fear of heights and, and it was a um, learning experience. So yeah, overall, uh, this past week and weeks, I've learned a lot of by about myself, and and hopefully uh, cured some phobia that I had. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it was it was a nice week overall. It was uh, was okay. So which one do you want to repeat the most? The uh, colonoscopy or the uh, high no, the trees? Definitely the <laughs> the tree thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the colonoscopy. I, I would have to do it again in the uh, five or seven years because past a certain age, when you are mm. over forty or over forty-five, it's uh, uh, kind of a uh, prevention uh, of um, yeah. Um, how it's called? It's it's a form of cancer. Colon so, cancer. Col yeah. Um, so you have to do it anyway. So when I said my to my dog, I have um, stomach pain sometimes. Uh, he was like, okay, we're going to check everything. So we're going to put camera inside your stomach, up your bottom, and we're going to check everything. And, and, and it was a good thing to check because they found nothing. So I know mm. that now the pain is caused from something else, which is probably um, fatigue and stress. Uh, so I would have to take it all easy or easier on me and, and not be... Um, so um, severe about the self-inflicted uh, pressure. Um, that's also why I, I took the August month off, to be honest. And yeah, yeah so good month, good week. I know myself in and out. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah. I, I, I think that's the title of the episodes. <laughs> no matter the name you? of the podcast, that's, that, that's the title of this episode. Like, Red gets to know himself inside and out. <laughs> inside and out, yeah. And it's clinically proven to not be full of shit. <laughs> I have pictures. <laughs> that's, a, that's, the, that, that's for the OnlyFans page. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what about yeah, you, Jan? I'm a little bit hungover, to be honest. Um, but, so, but by the looks of it, but what you showed us earlier, it was more than a little bit hungover. Yeah, I mean, I, I had the um, two, 20 pack of um, emergency Chick McNuggets. So, yeah, the, the fast food to like soak it all up. No, it's, um, it was actually like we had a great week and my wife and I, we were invited to um, Rheingau, which is like an um, area known for its wine. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of ours is, well, he lives in town here in Esslingen and but his parents come from Rheingau and he is um, they call it in Germany Kellermeister at uh, the local where they make like the, the sparkling wine or champagne so basically he's in charge for the quality of the wine like the development and the dosage and everything they do on the wine um, and as just so as it happens his parents own a vineyard back there Ooh. so they had an official wine fest and we were invited that's a good friend very to nice add. yes uh turns out it's not just that well at that wine fest it's not just that they had a booth there he's also one of the guys organizing the whole thing mm -hmm. wow so yeah it, it it got a little bit long it's actually really fun because the town itself is not that big and um so it was kind of like a nice atmosphere with like the local vineyards being there. Of course, we had everybody's like, because we were the friends like visiting from like far away. So we had to try like every single one of those <laughs> wines or at least start. It, it was actually not that bad, but um, we ended up um, leaving there. I think the whole thing shuts down at 11 o'clock, but um, all the restaurants know about it and they just keep on um, partying afterwards. So what basically happened at the end was uh, we ended up at the restaurant or the hotel where we stayed at outside and there were like 30 people left and still like drinking on the terrace. I went to bed at one o'clock. I think my, like my, my wife before me um, and that was good. Like it, it wasn't too bad, but I woke up this morning hungry, looking for breakfast at like eight ish 
and uh, there was still no one there. And the, the area where they served the breakfast was just deserted because turns out that the owner of the restaurant were also partying with the other people. Oh, <laughs> and um, yeah, nice. so some I, 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 it was mentioned like 3 a.m., something like that. So I'm glad I mean, that I didn't stay that long. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's late, but it's not so late that it gets early again. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's still, if you are looking forward to a coffee in the morning and there's just no mm -hmm. one there. So we yeah. did the only sensible thing. We walked next door into the next restaurant and just like used their breakfast area. <laughs> Basically, oh, you guys have breakfast. Fantastic. <laughs> Yes, yeah. sensible choice. Uh, they they all know each other there. Like this, it was really fun. But yeah, that's um, I'm just getting too old for that. <laughs> and then there was just a little bit too much wine. Yeah. And this was the whole of yesterday. That was the whole of yesterday. We drove there. It's like a three hour drive. We drove there in the morning, um, stayed overnight, wow. and drove back after breakfast this morning. Yeah. So nice. it's like, uh, it's, uh, but it's nice because it's um, next to the Rhine and mm. the river and uh, it feels like being on vacation because it's just a change of scenery. Uh, I mean, we got vineyards here, but there it's just, it's really picturesque and nice. So, yeah. so where in Germany are you actually? I don't think I've ever asked. Um, I'm in the Stuttgart area, like Stuttgart. a little okay. bit, little bit south of Stuttgart. Yeah. About yeah, okay. 20, 25 kilometers. Yeah. Which is some miles <laughs> x number of miles no one cares about the imperial stuff anyway <laughs> exactly yeah it's all gonna be this podcast will be in metric yeah that so everything, as if anyone everything were going to knows. doubt three europeans talking in peril i mean <laughs> we, we could try but i mean i have no idea what a mile is i i know it's more than a kilometer and uh, one it. mile is 1.6 kilometers yeah so you know it but i don't care so <laughs> I mean, it, it's not like it doesn't ma really matters at all. I mean, uh, if people really care, they didn't have internet. They yeah, have. I, I mean, if they have not have internet and they have this, then something is wrong in the world. Exactly. They don't even need their calculator anymore. All they do is just like, what are thirty centimeters in inches? Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. What about what about you, Rasmus? Uh, was how was your yeah. week? I I've been doing stuff. Let me just remember what I've been doing. Uh, yes, I made knives today. Or not today. I spent Tuesday forging four knives. No, six knives and hardening them. Okay. Uh, two of them uh, is um, for some kids. One for my niece and one for uh, a friend of my kid. Well, both of the kids are like three and five months old oh, so I'm keeping okay. up with so keeping but, up with the norwegian tradition of giving them a knife before they <laughs> learn how to walk yeah okay. so just wanted to say it's like the best thing you can do is just like oh yeah they can barely like you know hold the knife that's fine yeah yeah i mean i i grew up with knives i grew up in scouts i mean it took me a couple of years to stop carving my own fingers and starting with sticks but i mean you you learn after a while <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm like, I forged knives on Tuesday, then I wrote the, on the book on Wednesday, Thursday I did the sharpening of the knives and I started on the handles for the two of them. Uh, then I think I utterly messed up one of the handles, the only handle I actually started on, and I might have to redo it, or I might have to try to save it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and then I did definitely things on Friday. Oh yeah, I forged tongs on Friday for the classes I did this weekend. So I taught two people how to forge knives this weekend. Uh, I probably taught the cutest girl ever how to forge a knife, which was great. Uh, <laughs> she has a boyfriend, which is less great, but that's a different story. Uh, no, it, like it's it, both of the people were fantastic. The it's it's the best part of our teaching, I feel, is figuring out sort of what language the student speaks not literal language but more in the sense of how do i best communicate my ideas and my instructions to this person and have them like completed successfully with a minimal amount of fuck ups and frustration yeah. and oh, in true. his case i would basically say a and b and he will come back and say oh so we do c 
after that? And I would go, e yes. <laughs> and then he just went at it and she needs a bit more guidance. I was like, okay, so here's the whole picture. Now you do this thing. And then I follow up again and say, okay, you're nearly done with that. This is the next step. Uh, and that was basically just how she functioned. And But she did a, an amazing job at it. By all means, like she was a twig of a thing and she at the end was swinging the hammer like like yes you ada i basically say uh <laughs> i think i think they're not exactly the same size i think the the one i had uh, the student i had is like a couple of centimeters taller but if you can picture yes you ada forging this is what it looks like like a pure awesomeness even though equipment isn't really suitable for small ladies yeah it was for both of them, it was the f absolute first time forging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and and did, did you have feed feedback about what the uh, their experience was at the end of the class? Yeah, they they both appreciated my well, not not to indulge my ego too much, but they both appreciated the way I was teaching it, and that mm -hmm. I figured out that they needed the instructions handed to them in different ways, yeah. and it needed to. Um, which is really easy to do when you only have two students and my only job is to point and grunt for two days. Um, but okay. yeah, it's, 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 it's fun. I mean, it's really, really great. Not only just to show up and point and complain about things they're doing <laughs> uh, for two days and get paid for it, but it's really, really fun to take sort of show people the magic of blacksmithing, yeah. take a material that is so unmalleable, so stiff and hard to work with, and then they show them that, oh, you just add some heat to it and then it's plastic, then it's plastilina, basically. You can just yeah. squish it around and do whatever you want with it. Oh yeah. Almost whatever you want. Um. <laughs> but this, is, this is something that what, what I figured out. The first blacksmithing class I had was, like, it is fantastic and I love the feeling, but it's like, I think every blacksmith that teaches, there's like a little bit of the sadist in them, especially when it comes to knife forging, because oh, they yes, give yes. you mild steel <laughs> in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they let you beat the mild steel and you're happy and you're just like with every blow it like you completely form the metal and you're absolutely happy. Then they give you the steel they use for the knives. Yes. And Proper you start hard, hard banging hard. on it and it's just nothing is moving. <laughs> <laughs> and you're yeah. just like, okay, what yep. just happened? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so my, my approach in that regard is, yeah, I do it again mild steel first, but we specifically, I specifically have showed them how to forge S hooks. Okay. Uh, I want them to at least make two of them because the first will be shit and the next one will be better. And that's what I tell them. Like blacksmithing is simple in a sense, but it's also complex. There's a lot of different individual parts to remember, but all of them are simple. It's just get the heat right and hit where you're thinking, basically. Mm -hmm. And then you add on to that, whereas, oh, I, I've screwed up this thing, so I need to make sure to do it that way to straighten it out again. And all of those more complex things but it's it is simple and the craft itself the techniques we're using haven't really changed in if we just have better materials and better tools mm -hmm. so make the job easier and more consistently um but yeah i, I give them the s hooks they get the practice of stretching the material out forging an even taper moves on to bending it and forging uh yeah using only the hammer actually, and the Horn of the Anvil and the Edge of the Anvil to forge an even nice curve to it. Um, and then we move on to the knife steel when I've done a couple of that, because in my experience, they they learn to forge knives a lot faster if they have already done a bit of forging. Yeah, yeah. Because the process, it's it's a little bit com more complex doing the knives than the Essex. But it's basically the same process. You just need to be a little bit more specific about where you hit it and how you want to manipulate the material. Which is actually um, a lot easier with the knives, like with the harder steel. That's what I would like. Mild steel, usually there's more room for messing stuff up than um, with the knife steel. Like you, you can react to it. Like you see if something goes wrong and you can stop and correct it before it horribly goes wrong. Oh, you, oh you, mean, you mean because the steel, the knife steel is harder. It is harder, it, it's your, more forgiving. Your mistakes accumulate slower. Exactly. Yeah, 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 no, that makes sense. pretty much what it comes down to. This is how I felt about it, because uh, with the mild steel, if you hit it wrong once and you got it like really on temperature, you 
yeah, mm. you have a hard time, especially as a beginner, to get it back into shape. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I I hand them twelve centimeters of six mil square. Okay. And then we draw out both halves of it mm -hmm. to a total uh, forge out tapers from the middle outwards to a total length of twenty centimeters, mm -hmm. which is a good exercise. But the tiny stock is a little bit tricky to deal with because mm -hmm. it goes cold quickly okay. and it can be difficult to start to learn to use the tongs and swing a hammer at the same time. Mm -hmm. But then again, I tried to use give some students like an 8 mil square and have them make a bigger esok, and it was equally problematic, okay. it feels like. It was just different problematic. That that was gonna be my next question with uh, total beginners uh, coming to your class. Uh, do they start using tongs from the beginning, or do yeah. you have them to hold the material with their hands at first and then use tongs? Because in my experience, for what I've done in blacksmithing, um, my hand is the best tongue to hold materials. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Obviously, you can't uh, do that every single time. But you are um, so, so. I'm I'm always um, uh, more comfortable when I can hold the material with my hand and not with the tongue. The tongue uh, um, bothers me uh, mm. when I when when it comes to holding the material. So I was curious about about um, beginners co coming for for yeah. class. Uh, honestly, it's all about practice and having good tongs. Yeah, uh, I forged like four new tongs on Friday in preparation for the class. All different tongs just to hold flat stocks in different way mm -hmm. because that's the one thing i've been missing and I'm, i've been missing and wanting to make these tongs for or something and procrastination is really fun until you have to do it <laughs> yep <laughs> uh but but yeah and so I, I, I made a few different styles of uh, box tongs and like the u-shaped w-shaped things that clamps onto edges on the flat bar and things like that uh, I'm very nice, get good at gesticulating for an audio podcast, which helps a lot, I think. <laughs> um, what was I saying? I was saying something clever, I think. Tongs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially especially the, 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 the girl I had in, she was fumbling a lot with the tongs yesterday. But today she just walked in and picked up the material straight out of the gas forge right away. No problems at all. Okay. Uh, which goes to show that it's it's basically just like getting the technique in hmm. which as a beginner it's really awkward because especially when you're using a gas for it because it roars out so much heat so if you start fumbling and you stand there for a long time you start to scorch your knuckles but as soon as you get a little bit quick on it or get the technique of instead of having the material deep in the forge and trying to pick it up from deep in the forge you just fish it out to the outside and there you can sort of hold your hands outside of the blasting of the forge and sort of in a cool breeze yeah. and pick it up and take your time and it moves out quicker. Yeah. Um, but I, I have, I, when we have like specific coal forging going on, uh, it is like in most of that's been like basic backspinning courses where they tell me beforehand that, okay, so we are building a coal forge on our old farm. Can we do are we going to use coal forges or are we going to use gas? And I tell them, if you want, we can do the whole course with the coal forge. And then I take them through and we start making a, a fire poker because you will need that to manipulate the fire and mm. pile up the coals and get the clinkers out and all of that. And in that sense, we start with a long stick of steel and we don't use tongs at all until later on in that day. Mm. Uh, so that, that project is more complex, but it's easier for them to complete because they don't have to fiddle with the tongs as well roadblock later on anyway so it's and uh, I, I don't think i think you're doing them a disservice by making it easy for them to not use the tongues hmm. if they are actually interested in learning how to forge yeah i i think that's that's one of my problem when i started blacksmithing forging stuff um i i i didn't use tongues right away and now it's it's a handicap that I have, uh, some, yeah. something that I need to improve and, and to practice more with tongues because I feel more comfortable just using my, my bare hands or gloved uh, hand. Mm. Um, so yeah, I need I need a better pair of tongs for once. 
and, and then uh, use them more to get used to them uh, a lot more so yeah i would i would probably actually recommend that you if you don't have a really good tongs Forged either one? you find some old ones at the flea market or you yeah. buy some professionally forged ones mm -hmm. just to get a feel of how good tongs could be yeah and then as a practice to making your own tongs you try to replicate them yeah good like, idea Either blatantly try to steal the design and try to forge them yourself. Mm -hmm. Depending on the style and size of the tongs, that might be difficult. Uh, but it's a really good place to start to say, well, I know what it's supposed to look like. Here's what I have. Yeah, like, true. is it correct or not? Yeah. And then, of course, you can always like say, no, I did. Uh, it's not the true copy of the one I have, but it works better for some things and worse for other things. Mm -hmm. So now you have a new pair of tongs that will serve a one purpose very good. Yeah. So. That's good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Good shout. <laughs> Are we say. stealing words from other podcasts? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's more like an homage than stealing. So it's a. Uh, oh, we're them. trying to honor them by using their Absolutely. words. Absolutely. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It's. I mean. I mean. They. They. Uh, they will probably get fed up with us at some point, I think. The, the yeah, first guys. Probably. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Does it? I mean, do we want them to like us? I'm not sure. <laughs> not Steve, at least. Not Steve. <laughs> yeah. uh, Al is nice and Brett is cool. But Steve is a bit. Mm? Well, I, I can't <laughs> deny I love him. But I don't like that I, I love him. So, you know the yeah. this neat feeling of I really love him, but damn, that's it. <laughs> I I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. We Very kind that. of you to have the punchline while I'm drinking tea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I fine. I won't do it anymore. And he waited for it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard him. <laughs> okay. Well, so. I'm curious about a couple of things. Yeah. Well, I'm curious about a very great many things, but specifically, just. You mean today? Today you're curious about a couple of things. Yes. And in a to you general guys. sense, you are curious about a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I you have questions. Always. Okay. Good. <laughs> you you know this, Red? Come on. Yeah, I know. Uh. I it's... think question is great. Because May I talk now? No, you can't. <laughs> I, I, I think French is people. Great. Yeah, we are like this. <laughs> I think question is great when you get answers. Yes. That that's the only problem. Exactly. So I'm curious, do you... And now that he thinks that like you're done, I'm just gonna <laughs> <laughs> start talking over him. <laughs> oh, this, this is going to be the best or the worst podcast ever. Um <laughs> Okay, at least on my expense. No, it's so. Do you have like one big project that you're currently working up against, up towards? Like you're either starting to do all the research, you're gathering materials, you barely started it. Something that is sort of maybe not the holy grail of what you want to do, but like a proper milestone. Yeah. 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 I, I actually do. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to pick it up tomorrow. Um, I don't know. You guys probably saw that video of Tyler Bell where they used that old like dentist lamp. Uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. One and um, used it for light, for video light. Yeah. Um, kind of doing something sing similar. What I wanted to do for a long time is basically um, I was looking into like maybe getting a robot or something because I shoot all my videos by myself. So what I wanted to do is to like, get a little bit of motion. I never liked the, um, how do you call it, the, the sliders, the, the mm -hmm. video sliders for the cameras. Just not, yeah, n n nothing I like working with. What, uh, what kind of slider are you talking about? Uh, like the, the automated one with the motors or just the one. Oh, with, oh like, you mean to, to move the camera of, along and yeah. get pretty moving shots. Exactly. So basically okay, yeah. being able to work on something, not B-roll, but working on something, but getting a little bit of movement. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. But I'm just not never oh, warmed cool. up to them. Yeah. Also, um, it is a pain in my shop uh, to yes. set up a tripod because there's just no space. I can touch every wall of my workshop when I'm standing in the middle. Like this is the size of my workshop. Mm -hmm. So 
this is an issue. So what I got is basically one of those light poles that you can like mount to the wall. And that's what I use for the camera. But it's not the most stable thing. Like it's pretty shaky. So right. long story short, I've been looking on the internet for a long time to find one of those um, dental lights, like the heavier ones, uh, the ceiling mounted ones. Uh, oh. Because I used to work with yeah, yeah I, I used to work in the medical field as a service engineer, and I know those gas springs in there and those old halogen lights. I mean, they weigh up to like six to eight kilograms. So this is oh, like wow. they have yeah, enough that's power to hold a camera, and they are especially they are manufactured to keep the position. So they're not like springing up. If you get the weight somewhat in the right ballpark and you adjust the, the, those gas springs in them, you can get like something that you can move into a position. You just let it go and it stays exactly in that Ooh, position. That's cool. So that's this, cool. And this is something uh, that I want to do now. So I'm picking actually up the, um, the, the boom arm I'm uh, picking up tomorrow, um, close to Cologne. So I, I made a little road trip visiting customers and it's like on the way, basically stop and just load it in. <laughs> yeah. So this, you know, and this is something that's gonna help a huge amount, like still not, maybe not like to completely to get like moving pictures or like a, the moving camera movement, but just to get different camera positions a lot quicker. Than, yeah, uh, I, I mean, this got to raise the quality of level on your OnlyFans paid by a lot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the angles you can choose. I didn't <laughs> <to> tell you. <laughs> I didn't want to go all the way there, but I'm glad you did. Again, yeah. bad, bad timing for me to be drinking. Stuff. <laughs> Revenge is sweet, <laughs> my friend. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, so this is something I'm, I'm thinking about filming it. Not sure. Like if I'm actually supposed to make a video about it, but it's something I'm looking forward to because this is just gonna like up the quality of the videos a lot. Yeah. If I may, right. you you should shoot it if you can or mm -hmm. want, and then you can do whatever you want with the footage. If you want to make a video out of it, uh, you can. But if you don't shoot it and then want to make a video you won't be able to because you don't have that, any that footage. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean it's it's better it's probably better to take a few more minutes to shoot something that you really uh, you are really interested in and, and have the option to make a video one day if mm -hmm. you want to do so. Then yeah but there's, not. there's there's just not much I'm gonna do. Like with the video there's not the the making aspect is really small because mm -hmm. the thing comes completed. What I'm gonna do is basically just remove the lamp that is in front and um, I'm gonna draw up and probably cut as like uh, a, the, the 3D model and at work like we well because I work for DMG they're making the five axis turning machines and um, also CNC full automated axis I can give it to one of the engineers and it's like hey I need that like milled out of aluminum here's the drawing and basically just get that made like professional with the right hole so I can just use my small rig and just mount the whole camera on it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's not not much in the way of me like <laughs> crafting anything on it. It's really I bought it specifically for that purpose and I'm gonna get that stuff machined the, yeah, I, the, the I, parts that I need. I mean it yeah it it doesn't sound like it will be a build video. No. But it could be a really interesting show and tell. Mm. Or just sort of uh, ideas video, just to show it off. More like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say called a vlog, but more like, I bought this thing. I'm asking a friend to help me out. This is what I'm going to use it for. Yeah. I mean, that in itself is a kind of a coherent video. Yeah. True. But, I mean, you just share an idea and inspire people to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that sort of what we try to do? Yeah. Yeah, pretty Absolutely. much. Or maybe I'm just going to use it for like um, Insta post or something like that. I just not like usually I like yeah, yeah. The, if there's a story behind the stuff I make for YouTube and like, um, I mean, there is a story, yeah, in yeah, that case, but it's just short. It's not really instructional. And I kind of want to go a little bit in like the thought process in my projects. Like I'm changing it up all the time. Mm. So um, I'm just not sure if that is enough. Like, yeah, it's a cool idea, but it's maybe not enough to make a YouTube video out of it. No, but then again, I mean, uh, just a post or two on Instagram mm. explaining what it is and what you did. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's also very helpful for people. That is true. Yeah. yeah. So red. 
Um, yeah, I have a couple actually. Um, one is in the making for about two years, I believe. Um, yeah, it was probably two years ago. I picked up a very old, rusty, broken power hammer. Um, in a, I remember. Yeah, uh, in a in a house not far away. It was probably five minutes from home. Um, this this the. Uh, old blacksmith passed away and and his daughter uh, was selling the house so we went to see the house because we are searching for a house to buy and there was this um shop um behind the the house and the shop was actually a blacksmith shop with anvils hammers uh cold forge uh and a very old power armor so it's a french power armor i believe it's a companion 45 um and and it's been quite painful to bring it back home uh because it it weighs a lot uh we were not equipped uh, equipped uh, properly to um transport uh, this power armor and the best call would have been to take it apart right away and and bring it home piece by piece mm -hmm. um that would have been the 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 best choice i believe but obviously we didn't do that we tried yeah, to. Yeah, where would the fun be in that? Come on. Yeah, fun absolutely. Is all it was, yeah, we we had so much fun during winter with this <laughs> heavy stuff and no tools and equipment. Uh, no, it was fun. It was it was an adventure. I was I, I was doing that with my my brother and my father, so it was kind of fun to do. Um, and the guy give, selling the house uh, give a give us a hand to to move it out of the shop. Um, so. There's just Sorry, so what? much fun, like carrying cold cast iron, like in minus temperatures outside. Absolutely, it was, yeah. it was great. It was great. No, but we we managed to finally um, bring it back home, and it, it slept there for for one year or so um, because I I needed to do uh, to attend to other stuff and and do other stuff. Uh, and now I'm I've started uh, this uh, restoration renovation. I don't know how to call it. So it's all taken apart, uh, de rusted. Uh, I need to uh, check on the motor. Probably find another one because it's a big, really huge, three eighty volt motor um, with like probably fifteen amp. Uh, so I'm 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 not sure I will be able just to plug it in the house. Uh, mm. I'm not sure I have I have enough power in the house to 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 feed the beast. Yeah, so I will probably yeah I, I will probably have to find another motor and another belt or make another belt because at the time it was a old uh, leather belt so that's no problem I have plenty of leather to make a belt myself. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's it's not very complicated. The mechanism is pretty simple. Um, it's just that it's it's a it's a big machine, uh, and that will be my my uh, biggest restoration uh, to date. I've yeah. I've done a few things, but it was small projects, and and this one is actually huge. Um, and then I want I would love to set it up in my forge, but the forge is too small for it. Plus, when you when you install a power hammer, uh, you have to be very careful. You have to uh, pour some concrete in order to absorb the the, the impact. Yeah. Uh, yep. And it's it's so it's a, it's it's a very big project in itself. So I'm not sure what I will be um, doing with the power hammer when it's uh, completely done. Um, two choices: I can just keep it until I I I buy my own house and install it over there. Um, or I can sell it if someone is interested in the area to, to buy an old restored power hammer and, and money would be nice, uh, to be honest. So I, I, I don't know. There's also the third option. Which is? There's uh, one of, <laughs> there's a certain person out of the making community that just got a huge house with his own workshop in the back. That's, that's true. <laughs> and yeah. he's, he's not too far away from, from me. So Kiel, if... if Exactly, yeah, in, in like yeah. the, the upper Hamburg area, and yeah, I, I've seen I've seen pictures. Like I I have not seen over the last week like every Insta story he posted about it, but yeah. man, that place is freaking huge. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm, not, I'm actually I'm actually hoping to go there in end of October. Oh, cool! It's not yeah. a house. It's it's called a compound, 
yeah. and 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 I'm so happy for Kiel because he's been he's been searching for a cool house uh, to to for months and and it's been it's been a nice story to hear him go there to visit the house meet the owners and 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 bond with them mm -hmm. and find this really cool place uh with a lot of rooms a lot of work to do not that much but on the shop he, he, it will take time but but it's it's nice to see him now settled and 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 happy with his place and and yeah i i hope he will invite us <laughs> to have fun and work on it i hope he listened to this yeah, I'm, yeah i mean he when he gets a compound you sort of i think you are like it's mandatory by law to start a cult <laughs> and, I'm, and i'm very disappointed i haven't been invited to any orgies yet <laughs> yeah that's that yeah you're right <laughs> absolutely i i'm 100 percent with you on the, on this. yeah but uh, back back to the hammer though uh, you said it was something something 45 yeah is compagnon compagnon, compagnon 45. 45 is the so, 45 the ram weight i've i i'm not sure i've i've been searching for uh information about this this programmer online uh, I know that it's French. I know that Companion 45 is the uh, name of the model. I've, I've not, I'm not sure about um, the, the, the power it really has. I guess it's, it's. Um, I guess 45 is it's it. It's the, the power that it has because it would be dumb to call it 45 for yeah. any other reason. I mean, it could, it could be like the British using stone for weight, or it could be reference to pound something. I mean, yeah. Uh, Compagnon just means a uh, fellow, yeah, a friend, yeah. someone yeah, who it, works with you. So, yeah, uh, I, I, will, I will do. I will do more research <laughs> and, and more digging about that. In language sidebar, uh, yeah. Compagnon in Norwegian, yeah. Yeah. it means a partner in crime. Yeah. Oh, so he same, does this. Same in Germany. Oh, yeah. really? So he <laughs> yeah. does this. This. Uh, kind of negative or guilty meaning to it yeah it's specifically in crime yeah wow that's interesting because in french it's it's uh, a friend helping you doing something or doing something with you with no well if your friend meaning. is french and you're norwegian or german then it's probably in crime <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <right>. exactly <laughs> yeah can't argue about that yeah. yeah, but that, but but if it is a forty-five kilo ram weight, then the whole machine must be weighing like a ton and a half or nearly two tons. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really big. It's um, it 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 is really big, absolutely. And and I there is on the side of the machine there is this old switch, you know, the this lever oh, yes. that you put up like when you want to uh, a put single stroke or. Uh, in Frankenstein monster, you know, when you want to... Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, like a big proper, proper lever to yeah, start yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, which is freaking dangerous because all the wires are exposed and you can touch everything. Um, that's, that's part of the excitement. Yeah, but yeah, I would have to... Uh, so it, it's on its way. It's it's going slowly, slowly because, uh, as I said earlier, I took the, the months off work uh, to be with the kiddo and, and do other stuff. Uh, but I will get back at it in September. Um, I kind of announced it uh, for summer 2021, and summer officially ends uh, September 21st, 1, 1, mm -hmm. 21st. Um, so I still have time to do that. And I'm working on also uh, working on something else, uh, which is a leather project. Um, I want to make another leather armor. Um, quite different than the one I, I, I did before. Uh, the, the, my first armor was the one inspired by... Uh, it was not inspired. It was exactly what I was seeing in the movies, um, not movie, video game Skyrim. It was a Nightingale armor. Uh, as close oh, as yeah. possible, I could make it. Um, and I'm I mean, super I mean, happy with that's, it. That's like five stitches away from being a <laughs> porn thing, though. Uh, it, what? <laughs> I mean, the Nightingale suit of armor from Skyrim. I mean, that's scandalous. Or well, could be if you're playing a female character. Oh, oh in that sense, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't remember. I made the male version of it. I don't remember the 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 female character version of it. But I don't remember it was that that the body was that exposed. It was yes. pretty covered. It's, it's maybe, a, maybe I had a special mod then. Never mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm it, sure it, you had. That's probably what <laughs> happened. Yeah. No, but it's it's actually it, this is still one of the most like craziest things. Like if you look at the video games, like if you have the same like type of armor and you have a male character and a female character. That's, that's it's insane. just like and you look at you look at the model of it and you're just going like they're really getting away with that <laughs> yeah yeah and, i mean when you have the armored bikini it's like mm, that might not be right what's what's I've, what's the name of them um oh my god there's like um satirical they're, they're making like the youtube videos about like video games and just like about stereotypes and making fun of it oh i see um, that um it's or I've seen the meme of it or something. Yeah, and and there's and they, they they have like two or three shows where they just basically make fun of that. So you see the guy like giving like a huge pressed armor to a warrior, and then you see like the next one, uh, epic NPC man. And you is see that, the, is that the name the, of it? The, it. It's the name of like the the show. Epic NPC man is like the all. It's kind of like World of Warcraft based. Yes. Yes. And and you see like the same girl is coming around just finish the same quest and just like yeah i take the breastplate and you see him like with the bikini like <laughs> just <laughs> holding like she's going like what the f <laughs> and then it just bleeps out <laughs> i yeah. think that i've heard recently that that uh, uh, female gamers are, are starting to get heard about that kind of stuff and and mm. people are, are, are starting to get annoyed about that specific stuff and they are trying to change the designs of of female character armor because it's it's like just not not fair i'm sure all the uh, software games making companies will not uh make proper armors for female character because there is this sexy uh, yeah. aspect of the character that they want to preserve but man come on guys do something proper if if, if you and you can't get away with it just by saying, yeah, but female characters are stronger, so they get hit less, so they don't have to be protected as much as main. That's, That's bullshit. BS. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, it was. It, it, I'm making a male version of, of an, an armor. <laughs> <laughs> right, track. that's what you're talking about. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first one was was inspired, uh, was the Skyrim Nightingale armor. And I want to create, um, I still have to finish the, the one I started about um, three years ago, uh, the Witcher 3 bear yeah. armor. So I want, to, I want to get it done. It will be done uh, probably before December. But I have this stupid idea uh, that comes back to my mind uh, every now and then to make my uh, one of a unique armor from from one of my designs uh, a mix with material, not only leather. So leather would be ninety percent of the the armor, but also include some some steel and some um, other parts that I, I, I'm i not sure yet, but something like cool uh, that will take time because one nice. part of the armor is actually chain mail. Uh, so it takes a lot of time to, yeah. very time consuming to, to build up. Um, so that that's the, that's the reason why it's, it's a big project because making this chain mail uh, thingy uh, it's gonna take days and probably a full week of work for just this bit of the armor. Um, so yeah, that's that's also a big project I'm I'm working on, and and that's why I'm also taking my time to design it properly and to uh, get all the leather and the chainmail and the other things that I want to use for this project um, to get it done properly and and for it to look cool in the end, I believe. So, I have all kinds of faith in you. Thank you. Oh yeah. That that's the second time someone tells me that today, which which is super weird. The the, the first you're the second one, and the first one I was eight meters up in the air on a tree platform, and the girl from the from the 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 thingy, the guy the girl responsible for security was uh, looking at me, 
I was kind of hesitating to go on this zip line because it was really high for me. And, and she shouted at me, I face in you, you can do it. And I was like, thank you. So I did it. And, and nice. Nice. Yeah, it's nice to have people to have encourage face you. you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And, and especially twice in a day. That, that's great. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. What well, about I... you? Do you have big projects? And... Well, I'm, I'm just about to start to move both yeah. apartment and workshop and everything that's a big one at the same time yeah that's an even bigger one yeah don't, don't um, mix them up <laughs> well <laughs> in my case that might be an improvement uh, <laughs> no it's it's um it's exciting i'm heading out to a friend of mine's uh hopefully on tuesday uh because he has a spare house on his farm and a blacksmith shop that he is using, but he doesn't know how yet. And he is really excited to learn more about blacksmithing. And it's like, well, I could rent it fairly cheaply and mm -hmm. it should be big enough room to keep doing the classes and bigger classes and maybe even start doing some social things of hammerins and trying to build up more of a hub and do not like classes where you just show up and you learn stuff and then you leave, mm -hmm. but more akin to the social aspects of what, what basically we do when we hang out. It's like, oh, we talk a lot, we drink a lot, we eat a lot, and then we make even more stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we try to sleep in between somewhere. <laughs> um, fast. Really fast. We really sleep fast. Really fast. Yeah. Uh, and so that's. That's sort of the bigger thing I'm working towards if is creating more of a hub for metalworking and traditional crafts near Oslo, uh, which is more of a long term goal than anything I'm counting on being able to do like right now. Mm -hmm. But that's the big dream I have at the moment to sort of, oh, it, it includes owning my own farm instead of renting just a house somewhere and all of that. But that's mm. the big thing, own small farmstead. Preferably lots of forest and far away from people, uh, but near enough to Oslo so that people actually care to come. And with a good internet connection? Of course, <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, create that hub of makery life and have things going on, not only blacksmithing related, but like, because I want to learn more things than that, going on to cookery things and uh, maybe sewing and leatherworking and like furniture making and all of all of the things that are kind of nice. cool. Mm. I mean, uh, even even three D printing would be fun to dive into, or metal casting. Three uh, D printing in that sense, to metal casting. Yeah. Uh, but of course, my heart is more in metals than in plastics and wood. So we'll see how things actually develop. But I, so, could, could be fun. So the plan is for to rent for now. Yeah. Or you're buying for your friend? No, you're renting. No, I'm, I'm renting. Uh, I tried to get a mortgage early yeah. this year, and I'm basically missing just a little bit higher income for yeah. one year more okay. with the accountant before the bank what's, could actually give me uh, a mortgage. Because that's the benefit of being like small and self-employed and not really having a good sense of money. I mean, I have a good sense of business, not just a need to herd, hoard of money, yeah. uh, which means that the bank just looks at what I'm making and saying, well, this isn't enough for us to give you an actual mortgage. You're nearly there, but not quite there yet. Okay. Um, so even though I feel like I've been doing fairly well, it's not well enough in the eyes of the bank. So, But in your new place, yeah, capital is, yeah, it's, it, that's, that's, how, that's how it's called. <laughs> Uh, in your new place, you will have to, uh, the opportunity to grow your business. Um, yeah, hopefully. and get uh, get the money that you like for the moment to buy your your own place, right? Yeah. Uh, so currently, like this year, year and a half, about half of my income has been from teaching, uh, and that's with having about two or three students at a time, mm -hmm. and. That's been doing fairly well. I have a current, I think I have a waiting list of nearly 30 people. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That yeah, that's, I've been really lucky that way. Um, yeah. And to be honest, I have 
for some reason have people come from literally all over Norway. Okay. Uh, the first guy came from Hammerfest, which is the same, which is further away from Oslo than Rome is. Wow. Yeah, it's the northernmost city in Norway. Uh, I had a lady drive some eight hours from out west that's, and take up a hotel. That's some highly motivated people. Yeah. Um, it, that's absolutely awesome. And no, it's what you do. That, that's, you that's a, those two occasions yeah. are not rare. I've had a couple of that. I had some Swedish lads in a couple of years ago to teach them some axe making. To be fair, before I was really good at axe making myself, but that's besides the point. Uh, they, they, they were really happy, it seemed. <laughs> yeah. That's what counts. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Uh, but yeah, so sort of the whole teaching thing, the social aspect of it is the most fun. Which also might be evidence in the sense that I have been working and living alone for a really long time. And mm. even though I hate people, sometimes it's nice to meet like new faces. Absolutely. But yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. It's okay. it's exciting, and I mean, I have ten days to move everything. Okay, <laughs> sounds sounds short. Yes, uh, not very sensible, but yeah. When do you Although, start? Uh, I I am going out to his place on Tuesday. I hope to get help from my mates on Thursday and or Friday to start moving things. Okay. I have friends with big pickup trucks and okay, good. Uh, equipment to haul things, so it's it's more of just having the time to drive there because yeah. it's an hour or something away from where I'm currently at, mm -hmm. uh, and it's closer to Sweden, which I don't like at all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then again, I'm 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 actually hoping to go over to border at some point and visit uh, Nils Ögrand and Torbjörn Oman. Mm -hmm. Uh, briefly talked to them about it just as pandemic hit, uh, or last summer, I guess it was. And they were like, yeah, yeah, whenever the borders open, please come over. And I'm really hoping I can do that. And I really hope the offer still stands. But yeah, we, we'll see how it goes. Cool, it's cool. exciting to see yeah, the most. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. So lots of stuff going on. I mean, I've. And I've, a new podcast. Oh yeah, and and I tried to finish a book and things oh, yeah, and projects yeah. and orders and ideas I want to realize. And I mean, I have at least three sketchbooks full of ideas I haven't even started on. Yeah. So tell me about it. I have I have plenty of lists of projects and a few sketchbooks with drawings, mm. poorly done drawings because I, I don't have time. I just have to write it this down to not forget this idea. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean. Kind of thing. A lot of my ideas are on post-it notes, mm. just to keep them simple, yeah. and just to remember the concept of it. Mm. I'm, I'm so absolutely how, not afraid of forgetting the specific idea. So, how many rooms um, in your apartment are yellow, like completely plastered? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I mean, I, I cleaned up to have the whole thing as to have a viewing of the apartment now. So I actually cleaned off the way, but I had like a couple of cork boards just full with post-it notes. Not even hang up on the wall. They were just sat sitting on chairs. <laughs> yeah. Um, spiffy things. Are we doing that word? Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, no. We don't, oh, do we have to come up with a new word for that? <laughs> oh, yeah, we have. Um, yeah. I mean, we have shouts. to find something. I mean, What's been catching your attention? What's what's been enjoyable in your week? Um, I'll start. Yeah, please uh, do. Um, I had I had a phone call uh, with Caro, uh, so the the wonderful Caroline from Pop Shop Berlin the other day, um, just to catch up and and exchange a few ideas about stuff, um, which which was great in itself. And tonight she is a guest um, of the podcast uh, Makers Waffle. Uh, so oh, when nice. this gets aired, if it ever gets aired one day, uh, go back to Makers Waffle podcast YouTube homepage. And YouTube. hit your microphone. 
Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm not used to have the thing in front of me when I'm talking. Um, so yeah, she, today she's a guest uh, on Makers Waffle. Um, so go listen to that. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just blown away by her work. Uh, each and every time she posts uh, something about what she's doing, what she's making, uh, it, it just amaze, amazes me. Uh, it's just so stunning. Um, I've I've told her many times before that I want an exact replica of a sculpture she did probably two years ago of a uh, face praying with, it was a medusa, so the whole the hairs were uh, snakes. And oh, it's like probably yeah. two or three meters high. Uh, yeah, and cool. I want that in my living room. It's absolutely beautiful. And every single thing that she does is wonderful. So... Yeah. Uh, you want that thing, the big physical thing, or print yeah. of it? No, I want the thing. Okay, cool, cool. In my living room. Can, I, basically... can, I, can, I, can, I, can I suggest one amendment to it? Yeah. Make it a fireplace. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Carol, I mean, if you're listening I mean, that, to this, we I mean, to if it, I don't know how it will fit with all of with the hands sitting there and the face and all the snakes, but I just imagine having the face above the fireplace and all the snakes coming out of it. Yeah, no, that's that's a cool idea. But in, in, in everything she does is is so nice. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, she's well done. terrific. She's, yeah, and this week she was working on brains, like yeah, I saw that. Fake I mean, brains. I, yeah. I mean, I was scrolling through Instagram and I was just thought, oh, brains. Oh, that got to be. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's Carol. <laughs> yeah, that's Carol. Who else? Who else? No, and they in were a wonderful way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely weird in a beautiful way and a wonderful way. And and they look uh, uh, better than real ones. I mean, that's that's just insane. And Have you I re uh, I've eaten quite some brains when I was a kid because my Rose. mother. <laughs> yeah, first French. They, 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 first of all, I'm French, um, and my mother used to think that if you feed brains um, to kids, they get smarter, which is total BS again. But anyway, uh, that was a, an old habit in France to eat that part of animals, hmm. and and as soon as I was I was old enough to say it, no, I'm not eating that because that's not tastes not good and it doesn't look good and it, anyway i stopped pretty early but yeah still i i understand that yeah we, one day we'll take, talk about food and and all the bad <laughs> stuff that we eat here uh there's a long list and so. i can tell you about a good old traditional soapy fish and sheep's head absolutely and then like buried salmon and wait other things <laughs> yeah and Jan will take us in whatever direction he wants to take us with German food. Do you have good, disgusting stuff over there too? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say disgusting. Um, like weird, just weird. Yeah, I mean, uh, innards are definitely a thing, like in all European oh, countries, yeah. I believe. Um, yeah. So I'm not a big, I, I like liver, but um, I mean, mm. if you're talking about. Uh, yeah, brain, also brain and stuff. No, like no, just that. tease it. Just, just tease it. You don't need to explain just, everything now. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, a... just a taste. Okay. Liver and things. Liver. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, Carol is my um, shout out for the week. Very nice. Yeah. What about you guys? Um, a channel is something a little bit different. It's actually, uh, it's actually a maker channel. You could say that. Uh, it, the channel is called Super Fast Matt, and okay. it's hilarious because that guy is, um, I believe, he lives in California. So what he's doing right now, he used to be an engineer for Tesla, and mm -hmm. at the moment he's putting a Tesla drive drain into an old Jaguar from like. Oh. 1930 or 1940 something oh. like the Ooh. the big one with like the suicide doors and stuff like that Ooh. that in itself is already nice but the best thing about it that guy has such a dry humor like he's fluent in sarcasm 
<laughs> so <laughs> that's my language. Yeah. Nice. I, oh, it's just just watching him, and he not only does those projects, he also put a motorcycle um, engine into a Honda six hundred or six thousand. Not sure if the the, the term for it, but uh, yeah, I know he's just fun to watch, and he also does did some videos about. Um, uh, how's it called pikes peak like the the race going up there and also in the salt flats that super where they have those supercars that do the races yeah. so he's just like really into motor sport and everything i am not but having that guy explaining it or talking about it actually gets you excited and just yeah. like i said the humor is fantastic nice cool yeah. you need to send me a link for all of that yeah it will do and I would like to shout out the Make Monster, Jake Walden, for oh, finally yeah. being back Damn, on that's YouTube. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good he one. Got, yeah. yeah, yeah. He literally got a new face and a new workshop. <laughs> yep. yeah. And, like, honestly, whenever I'm dating someone and I want to show them the madness of my friends and the maker community, <laughs> I show him the Maker Monster because he is so fantastic so hilarious and he's so cute in his honesty and what he tries to do absolutely and his delivery and his editing is fantastic yeah. and the absolute best part about him that laugh that's his real laugh yes yeah oh <laughs> uh, yeah no uh, to make a monster simply fantastic human being or or is he <laughs> no he's, he's great like that's, no, that's no, I think that was a good place to end it. Come on, it was a cliffhanger <laughs> thing. Oh. No, 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 you know, I won't let you do that. that. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that, guys. We'll, we'll yeah, work yeah. on the on the cats and the cliffhanger and the stuff. Wait, it's it's. No, I, I mean, I mean, I, honestly, I think half the fun is like me trying to run a show and you just think, <laughs> no, not at all. No, yeah, um, yeah. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean. Um, as I said, I have no idea what I'm doing here. But yeah. yeah, me neither. I'm just being attacked by uh, mosquitoes because I forgot to close the window. So, yeah. The way, the way you were looking up, it seemed like you were being attacked by the sun. No. Because the sun I, is so bright in there earlier. No, it's it's late here as well. I'm, um, I'm on the same time zone that you are. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. And I can look at the window as well. It's even getting dark in Norway. It's that late. Yeah. I mean, late in the year, not in the day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's more like you were looking up and somewhat, for some reason, your camera was whitening out a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, I'm probably the settings that I didn't do properly. Uh, nobody we'll figure cares. It out. I'm just attacked by, by yeah. mosquitoes. But that, I'll stop yeah. my recording now. Yeah. And I'll run to the bathroom because I really okay. have to eat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Be back in a second. Yep. Well, that went well. That probably. was great. Yeah.